All right, folks. Sorry, I am way late on this one, and I do apologize. It's just I've had a hell of a day. Okay. Um, short briefing. I went to a hobby store called Hobby Lobby, and look what I found. I just saw P51 Airfax, and I wanted to give these guys a chance to redeem themselves, and I just reached up and grabbed the damn thing. I could have grabbed the Spitfire or uh, 109, but I've already got a one. Actually, it's not a one night. It's a one night, and it's not a 109. It's a 111. Uh, that, well, it's 109. I converted to a 111 by just simply giving it an Israeli mark right after the war, which is what happened. The Israelis were desperate for planes, reputations, and badasses, and the 109 had quite the reputation. But they bought the they bought them from the wrong area because they heavily modified the engines. In fact, they didn't even have a 109 engine in it, which is one of the reasons why it was a mistake for them. But they wanted the they wanted the I think they wanted the reputation more than they wanted the airplane. So I got this P-51. Like I said, I just reached up and grabbed it. I'm right now removing the price tag. I'm not ashamed of how much I paid for it. In fact, it was, it was nine bucks. But with 12 with taxes. Now, uh, I had put this particular model from Arapex together when I was a kid. And I also put together the 51, the 109, and a couple others, 110. I wanted to have me a nice little Air Force hanging from my ceiling. It wasn't until much later in lap I learned how damn bad the German, the some Germans were. But I just reached up and grabbed this. I had no clue as to what I was grabbing. I just saw a P-51 reached up and grabbed it. And the price tag was covering the tail. Right here was the price tag. I thought I was just grabbing the standard P-51 with uh, that an ace blue. A white American. I should say an American white blue. I didn't, I had no clue that this was a black, uh, American black who flew this. Now, I'm saying that that way for a specific reason. I am an American first. Then I'm a white European. I don't care what anybody says. I am an American first. You want to argue that point? Take it up with Congress and have them change the Constitution. That's all I got to say about that. But I had no idea it was the Stiggy Airman who flew this particular uh, version of the P-51. I also didn't know that this was a top lieutenant in there by the name of Surgeon Ravel. And I know I'm, I'm not Sturgeon. Uh, Squirgeon Ellington. I know I butchered his name. I ne never have been good with names. And I apologize for that, Lieutenant. But uh, and my apologies to anybody who I'm offended by saying it that way. But uh, the Stiggy Airman went through a hell to get sit behind the stick of an aircraft. Now, I, to this day, I don't know if any of them flew bombers or freighters or, you know, C-33s, C-47s. I think that's what they were. But anyway, I don't know of any other, anybody else but white pilots flew those to this day. But I did not know this was a DC airman. I just, like I said, reached up and snatched it down. And I'm going to be putting this together with the greatest of care because it was the DC airman. And I do mean that. That'll be uh, after I do my Pink Panther. And before I do my X-Wing, 
Now, I enjoy putting models together. I don't care what they are. If, they, if I had a model of an old West 6 shooter here, I would probably do that in a day. And then keep it that way for about three or four months and then come back here and change it. And I've got several other models that I'm going to be coming back and repainting and redoing. Yes. But this one, I will not. This one will remain the Lupu. I do not know how to pronounce this name on the bird to save my life. <coughs> um, but I will check and see to get that name pronounced so I can pronounce that name right. But he was a highly decorated pilot. And I mean a highly decorated pilot. And that really surprised the hell out of me. And I really didn't know until I got at home and did, oh, crap. <laughs> There's a the CG Airman. And like I said, this will not get a modified paint job to it three months from now. Once I put this together, I will make sure all the decals are in the correct position. And the, t the paint job is right. And then I'm going to leave it. It will forever be this Lieutenant Sturgeon Ellington. It will forever be his plane. I'm not going to touch it after I build it. Once I'm done building it, that's the way it's going to be. And I've got a 109. Like I said, that is a, actually not a 109, but a 111. And uh, I gave her, the reason why she's a 111 is I gave her an Israeli markings. And they put a slightly different engine in that and propeller, which overpowered the plane, which made it hard to handle on landing and takeoffs, which the P-51 was hard enough to handle on takeoff, let alone landing. It's fairly easy, just came right in. But I thought I'd like to show you that. So he's going up here underneath the Big Panther. I've also got an X-Wing up there by Back Bandai. And that model there is a shot of redemption because I put together a PBY Catalina Black Cat from the same company, Aerofex. And they managed to do something that company doesn't normally do. They threw themselves underneath the bus. Because I noticed that the pilots were a little bit were just a little bit big for the plane and some of the parts that came along with it were missized out of scale so I and I whined and bitched about that thing enough and my apologies for the language but we're here I also got this also because I was getting that kit and I needed some paint to test out, and I've been wanting to buy the buy um this particular set of paints for one specific reason. Are they water based, and how well will they work with my current setup? Which I'm using mostly water based, anyways. But I will. I am planning to kind of switch when it comes to the more detailing of a model that will be in place, like with a 148 scale, there's going to be heavy detailing in that, unlike a 172 scale, which is not that there is detail how much the company puts into that bird. Once that detail is put in, then I will um, assess from there on. Well, there is an aluminum kind of dull but there is an aluminum so and p51s very rarely uh the d's very rarely were heavily camouflaged or uh given camel paint schemes a few were but those were few and far between and uh looks like the aluminum is going to do pretty good so, we're going to put this aside for right now. I also got me some saw blades. Now, this is not for these models. No way. 
these are for if I need to make another uh, shelf or rack or something. That's what I got these for. Because if I can't if I can't afford it, I'll build it. Now, as I said earlier, this is about building the Apollo 11 uh, diorama and moon landing. <coughs> yeah, I have to excuse me. I am uh, having problems breathing. Now, I'm going to mention something, but uh, I like listening to music, and I'm trying to watch a little bit of the right stuff. Hopefully, it's not being picked up in the background. So I'm going to turn my favorite radio station on. So give me a quick second here. Because this is going to take a little while. Actually, a few seconds. The Eagle 96 Sacramento. Come on, let me listen to it. I just had it. Oh, yeah. But you can't hear it. And that's because of my Aftershock headsets. Which, by the way, I do recommend. Okay, now. I just might try that aluminum out tonight. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to do that. Okay, uh, the reason why I'm going to try the aluminum out and the reason why I got that is because it might have had an aluminum in there. Now, I want you to imagine something. I mentioned this in my last video, which I'd appreciate if you would go take a look at it. Is that, see this brass or gold leaf? It's actually brass. Brass is fake gold and is on a lot of uh, medieval jewelry, disguising the medieval jewelry. They said so everybody thought it was gold. But it's actually brass, so they can go out and get, when, if they got robbed, they didn't lose a lot of money. Okay, uh, but it was but the walls of the of the lunar landing module were about this thick and that's less than a millimeter thick okay and so and it was tight spaces so i'm going to take a look and try out this new aluminum that i got and glue them down now i'm going to also uh there was, uh, I also might try applying that aluminum to spots here and there on this. Because uh, I do know that the lunar service had, was more aluminum color or, or dirty cement color than what actually is here. Might lighten it up a bit. So I'll have to be careful around uh, where I've already pre shaded. Now here are all the parts that I'm going to hit with this aluminum. So let's see how this comes out. Uh, here is the world famous Apollo 11 camera. Uh, that managed to catch the flag waving on the moon. And it could be controlled 
at NASA to a certain extent. Mm, okay, right on target. So, uh, here's the solar reflection experiment. And that went... Right over here. Now, where this part went, I have no own. Right there. Somehow. Now, I tried to, even on nights like tonight when I'm late, I really am late tonight. So I'm not going to be on that long. Okay. Now, some of these experiments, even the astronauts knew were going to be horse pucky. Okay. They knew that these experiments weren't going to mean Jack Jilly squat thing one. NASA knew it. But there were those at NASA who said, we got to send up these experiments. Now, like I said, I'm watching the right stuff over my shoulder. And uh, I have to make a correction on one thing I've been saying for years because I got the name wrong. Uh, is that um, Alan Shepard is the guy who invented, had helped, who caused NASA to invent something that everybody's used since 1975, since 1970. And that some people are using again today. Now, that is a very little known hysterical fact. Okay. Now the question is, can you guess what we're talking about? What we're talking about. And I'm going to make a bet you can't. It's a commonly used item that's been used since 1970. Now, one of the things I always keep around is a little bottle of water. Okay. Now, I'm just going to put a little bit of water in there. Not much. Don't need that much. I always keep all the water handy. I also keep all my cleaners and stuff for airbrushing handy. And I have a garbage or a dumper. I'm going to put that right there next to that water. That's where it goes. 
Now we're going to take a look at what we got here. I'm going to take a look at this. Now there's a pit hole in the back of this. So we're going to take a little sand, a little filing paper, or nail file, and scratch ever so gently on the back. Not apply hardly any pressure. And just gently file, not using hardly any pressure on the back. Get away with major debris. I can get paper. Now that's 220. I need something a little finer than 220. You know, like tons of 220. Oh, there we go. Now, normally I'd wet this, but. This is in that huge of an area. <coughs> okay. Now, I'm not going to use any advanced techniques because I don't know any. Like I said, I'm going to airbrush this. And I'll apply some of the look at. I'll try the aluminum here across this back edge, just like I did with this yellow. Actually, it's brown that I made, which is right there. And do the exact same thing. Now, um, so this is going to get airbrushed, all except for the ends. So now I need my, there we are, my tweezers. And I do recommend you get these. Find them in uh, just about any model crafting catalog. They do the holding for you, which is exactly what you want to have that. Okay. There we go. That'll be the first thing that gets painted, and then I'll glue it in. And like I said, I've got to be careful, and I'm also going to apply a little black here and there. That's nothing. All right. So let's check these out. Uh, aluminum. Uh, a second from the end. Uh, now, one of the things I do recommend. <laughs> Is that do you know your paint? Keep it in its original container as much as you possibly can. I'm not too crazy about this already because I mean, uh, not the paint, the size of the bottle. Okay. I don't need that much, so. But it is in a teardrop bottle. And I shouldn't need that much of it yet. But when it comes to the my mind, I'm gonna need that much of it. So far, this looks pretty good. Has a nice metallic feel to it. Okay. Uh. 
Uh, if you're wondering when I'm looking for something, I am. Normally, I have all everything I need already out. So, here we go. Uh, if you wonder why I'm using a respirator, this is all water based, so. I was using something that, uh, something that I have to use a chemical printer for. Yes, you would be right out of using a mask. change direction. Camera could monitor it for years.
I've got some gunmetal paint. So this is how you're going to do the job, basically. The tricks that I have learned is when you apply the paint with double trigger there with a two stage trigger airbrush. Because when you're done applying the paint, you're going to let the paint just pull out. The air. I'm doing here some spots. Some spots I'm blasting hard, and others I'm just blasting there. I'll dry the paint a bit and pull back. I'm being as detailed as I possibly can with this model. A, it's a one way scale, and you need to be that detailed. Now let's see how this is going to look on the lunar surface. Oh, that's already there. Right after you use your um, airbrush, always, I mean, right after, don't wait, don't hesitate until you're done with the model. Blow it out automatically. Now I use a little water here as a blowout material, and I'll turn it all the way up. Thanks to do this. I'm going out with water. I'm back to me. It clearly helps clear the uh, gun. Now, however you hold it, is however you hold it. Comfortable for you. 
That was a little uh, airbrush cleaner. Otherwise, no bad windshield washer. Awesome drop with a few drops of alcohol into the airbrush and run that through. Give a maintenance check on that in the next after about the next two or three uses. What I mean by a maintenance check is that I'll break the gun down and make sure it's all clean. Now, let's, now again, we're trying this mostly as an experiment, but let's see how this works out. Uh, I use, like I said, I use a lot of. Uh, Use a little too much paint. So now I gotta clean up the paint job. I'm just looking to spread this out a little bit. You can call this a dry brush technique because it's going to remove some of the heavy paint scenes and leave just a touch behind in some spots, which is what I want. And I am liking what I'm getting here. I said this is part four in my title in my thumbnail. That's what this is. I'm working on this part here. Four videos. Now when I start building the limb, I'm not gonna be working on it that long because it'll be a quick build. But the detailing of that build, that's what'll take time. Builds nothing. Usually is. 
It's the, um, excuse me, I gotta get something. It's the um, detailing and that work that takes the most time. I've already gotten some of the detail work on this done and done, so no big deal. And yes, this is leaving it with a dirt the type of finish I want. Yes, it might not be lunar accurate, but guess what? Until we go back there, even with the pictures that we have today of what we've done there. Until uh, we go back and get some better pictures. I had, did clean out some of the spots that shouldn't be have anything in it. It's also leaving low lights and highlights as to where I want them to be. So I'm happy. Now, if you build this model, this is the 70th anniversary, not 70th, 50th anniversary of the landing. Come on. Seriously. Do it the way you think you should do it. Do it the way you see it needs to be done. Some guys will say, well, it was all. <laughs> Unless you can prove it in the court of law, it doesn't apply. Now, uh, I haven't added like or subscribe to any of my videos yet. That's coming this week. So like I said, I'm learning how to do this as we speak. I'm learning how to do my model craft all over again, so. Because uh, there's kind of an uneven shine of gray all over the moon's surface, so. Guess what? That aluminum did a nice job. Uh, now, Get nice and thin, which is what I want. I don't want overpowering shininess. And this aluminum is just working out great. I am getting it around because it's giving the highlights around some of the rocks, which is actually kind of an unexpected plus. So it is giving a nice shine. All right, that worked out great. Now I'm going to find my mop brush and see if there's a Black here. There isn't a black. Since I've already got the black down. I know what I just did it seemed a little cheap, but I also have a wicked black that I haven't used in a while. <sighs> I need my mop. There it is. Oh, God, that thing's huge. It's my huge mop. I need that. Here, just sit there. There it is. Okay, so.
I've got two different blacks here, so the white should still come out all right. I should pour that into a cup. Uh, now, someone's going to say, why didn't you just airbrush it in? No, I don't want to airbrush this in. Because these canals are kind of, because they lowered the, they wanted to, NASA wanted to make sure that they, everyone knew where the shadows were. So they indented them. So I kind of want to go around the indentations. I want to do this as much as I can without the airbrush for one reason. This is 19, this is a repop model kit. In other words, it rebooted the damn thing from 1969. So also relearning how to use a lot of model techniques. So, there's that. And you don't use an airbrush for everything when you build models. You have to use brushes. Now, back in the day, fine tip brushes or small tip brushes or whatever you want to call them, they weren't a dime a dozen. Not everybody was making them. There's some that you just could not buy from your average hobby shop. You had to put up with your usual crap brushes that the model paint companies put out. And our brushes, oh God, were they expensive back then. So there's no way a 12 year old kid could afford to do an airbrush. So big job like this, like using mop brushes. Now this is going over a flat, uh, over a flat, flat, black. That'll have a tendency to make this pop a bit. So, yeah. Brush cleaner alcohol with water based paints. Don't worry about it, it works great. Now, these brushes are kind of old. I got I forgot where I got them from, but they are definitely old. I'm going to glue those science experiments and kits down after I get them, after I get these shadow areas in line. I'll clean up with alcohol, get the edges done right. Now, the more prep work you do, the less cleanup you have to do. Now, this uh, whole area here was already prepped with flat black. This isn't exactly a flat black, but it makes it pop out a little bit.
Well, hello there, Dark Wolf. <laughs> that is my granddaughter. Uh, she's contacting me. She wants to talk to me, so. I am willing not to pause, but we'll talk with her. So give me a little patience, okay? No, I'm in the middle middle of making Apollo 11. And it says bait. Oh, there it goes. And right now I'm live on YouTube. Should I use this in the first place? It'll clean it up just as easy. What's up, little one? I thought you were mad at me because of our last conversation. But I do know um, one of the things uh, were these uh, studs sticking out of the ground, which were so they were settling in literally dust. They would know how deep it was, like snow. So those will get the old gray paint here in a minute. Just think about one thing. This area I'm painting right here is for a solar experiment where photons hit this flag and move it. That's what the, that's what the whole experiment was for, just to see how strong solar winds are. Now, I don't know if it actually measured any kind of impact on it or not. But just think about that.
Isn't this a school night? I know she's out of school. She graduated. Which I'm extremely proud of her for that. There's also other things I'm proud of her for that I'm not allowed, I won't speak of on the internet. Then why are you up this late talking to me? Don't you have school in the morning? You haven't graduated yet. Even though I did see pictures of her in her graduation outfit. I am extremely proud of her for that. Not from college. figures down a little bit with a brush. This is going a little faster than the first time I painted this. I was wondering why I didn't use the wicked black then. But she said you was. sent me her uh, graduation pictures. I already have those. Okay, have you gotten a hold of the grant book yet? Grants for two, three hundred dollars, that kind of thing. Which, by the way, all colleges have this book of subsidizable grants for books, supplies, 
if you fill out enough of those grant requests, you can literally pay for your college. One girl I know, she went to medical school on that book. I paid for everything. Anna, you can still use those grants. Definitely went quicker than the first one. But also the first one has been a lot more careful. But this is another water-based paint, so or alcohol-based paint, so the cleanup will be really and easy and I'll be done and then I'll glue those other pieces in with the exception of that I'll show you here with these black marks and there's the depth bulb where the uh, lander like I said it was going to sit on like a snow bank of dust boom No, I'm on my laptop being live on YouTube, which I've got to get back to now. I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? Give me a call around 9 o'clock, your time. Now, normally... extremely extremely proud of my granddaughter I have two this one did something I wish I could go into it here now with you guys but I can't But what she did that day, I am amazingly proud of her, especially considering the circumstances behind everything. I'm being a little extra in cleaning out this here because I don't have a lot of money. what I do have I have to hang on to so I do hang on to it as much as I possibly can whenever I can whoever said dislocating a bone was fun Out of the goddamn mind. 
Oh, I dislocated my shoulder, but I can do this trick now. I can dislocate my shoulder and relocate it later. I've got a dislocated elbow. Let me tell you, folks. Dislocated joint is not what it's cracked up to be. I'll say that here and now. Now, uh, let's see what I got to do. A little bit of touch and clean up. Uh, now I can use this brush. And a little bit of alcohol. What that will do is afford me a little cleanup. I'm going right behind myself. As I get the area cleaned up with a clean rag and clean it up. Right then there, no hip hands or butts. Touch up to be done. This is a technique I would not have used back in '69. And I have to go back with paint. That's no big deal. Easily cleaned up, some of it is. As long as you're careful, methodical, that brush is just too big. I have a smaller one. There it is. learning techniques and learning new ones at the same time, seeing if I can get a new technique to work for me. For instance, if I can get the paint removed from a spot right here, and just go back over it and gently clean it. Just by the way, I thought it was. I'm also working on my dinner, which it says I'm done with this. I'll go work on that. Sacramento, the Eagle 96. And they always guarantee a commercial. There it is. Come back and hit that again later.
I'm dyslexic. I have known that insulting. And just to let you know, I would hit this over again with that aluminum. In much the same way, I'm just spray around it. And that's it. Now, none of these over paints that I did are that dramatic, so I've never been that worried about it. Consider that this is a quick and easy cleanup. I got an X Wing. That Bandai, oh man, the detail work on that, I'm going to do, that's going to be like a seven parter. Now, the uh, radio station I'm listening to is based in Sacramento, California. And I just about insulted somebody. Even though I haven't been back to Sacramento in over 20 years. Yeah, it will. Oh, God, I hate, hate guys. And again, the amount of repaint I have to do is minor. I realize I promised to get some gluing done, but I also want to get this done too. It's part of the detailing process. I've seen guys make this process look so easy. Yes, Jay. Why? Oh, I'm in the middle. <laughs> I was talking to her. But I'm in the middle of doing something right now when she called. What am I supposed to do? Stop? Like right now, I'm in the middle of my YouTube channel. I'll talk to you later.
Still have a little bit of cleanup to do, but nothing that serious. time to actually Let's keep that to myself but that was my daughter on the phone This is all alcohol, so very no cleanup. Now let's take a look at the flag. Well, it's easily the most controversial thing that ever went up to the moon. I'll give this a touch up or two here and there, but now the touch up won't be that bothersome because I won't need that big of a brush. <laughs> Somebody said, why are you using a backhanded technique? I don't want to change position that much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. Oh, it, nothing that big criminal happened just now. Just built a bunch of alcohol. It evaporated something in an hour or so. Almost knocked it over a can. That would have been a crime.
granddaughter also wants me to download a game based on an anime. It would basically be a season of the anime called Sword Art Online. And yes, I do intend to broadcast that too later on. Right now, what I want to do is this. I'm looking forward to building this model for 50 years. And by God, nothing's going to stop me from doing that. I'll use this brush for cleanup too. Which would not be a very, very big problem. The nice thing about alcohol and water based paints is if you get it in your brush, because alcohol will penetrate better than water will. Uh, you can use that to clean up your bad spots real easy. So nice. Definitely, I got this a little paint dried. up there on the moon. My question is, how much of it is still operable?
see most of the equipment we left there on the moon surface was designed to be used for a very, very long time. since the lunar rovers we left on the moon. You see, we were supposed to do continuous missions on the lunar surface. But the Nixon said, we won the race, so we don't need to rover in the Russian spaces no more. We abolished the space program, put us into low Earth orbit. We should have been going back to the moon. again also didn't know how badly how much of a rotten ass Mexican was granted I was only 10 years old at the time but even back then always tell when there was a showboat around. Kids, I might blow your cover just a bit, but feel sorry if your mom and dad are underestimating certain mom and dad, not you. Okay. I've been up for long enough. Let me finish this one touch up and then I'll go. Ah, but I am going to get these glued down before I can leave for the night. I do believe in testing a few things out. And right now I'm testing one thing out that I should that I should be testing out, which is durability or the um, usability of the uh, ah crap, I forgot that was water. Then I'll clean up and uh, call it a night. And then I gotta call my granddaughter. It's her that I can't stop the show. Can't stop what I'm doing when I'm online with this, doing this, and stop and talk to her. Can do that for a little while, but not forever. I think she understood that. Her mother just blew it out of proportion. All I'm just trying to do is clean up my dirty edges here a bit. And I did. 
had some paint where I shouldn't have. Now I'm still going to be a cheap bastard when it comes to using my paints. get everything glued down but before I do that I want to start my cleanup here a little bit. Now most of what I have are rags. This is a new cutting board too. I've got one over this is most of my workstation. I'm about to be cleaning this area up over here. Let's see. Okay, now I need my glue. Okay, I'm gonna need. I'll put him in place. I won't glue him down because. needs to be painted. You know, I think I actually got that flag on pretty damn good. Now, much to my daughter's dismay, I have both of my granddaughters interested in something called anime. Which I do recommend every kid learn. Um, 
and know it is not inherently evil, like some preachers would have you believe. Yeah, that's it for that. Now I've got some trimming that I'm going to have to do on this flag. Don't get me wrong. This will permanently anchor the flag to the pole. I actually make it look like a flag. All right. Like I said, I'm done. Uh, it'll take a while. I'll take a little while, but it'll basically melt it in. But some of this I'll correct off camera, like this little bit of stuff right here. And I'll glue that down. But everything's glued down and in position. So everything's looking good. And there's some cleanup that still has to be done, but that's not a big deal. The big deal is, is actually getting this done. Now, if you want to give me a like or a subscribe, that would be great. I'd be asking. But uh, if you give me a like and subscribe, that boosts my channel. And I'm doing this not for money yet. I'm doing this to show off. And even if I were to do it for money, it would be because I'm going to like um, donate, uh, let's say, uh, uh, $50 for building the model and the materials and all that jelly good stuff. As an example, $50 for the materials, the model kit, the paint, the glues, everything. Plus a little bit for my time. Just a bit. And I'll even list that in the descriptions. Uh, and once that's done, everything after that, let's say because I'm over to auction this off, raffle this off, or auction it off, whatever. Even though I don't make that, even though I say, like I said, I sell, I say, I got $75 tied up in this. And I only get $75. And I say, I'm going to donate money to charity, like let's say the veterans, uh, a veterans charity, charity. So I'm not going to do this, this is for my granddaughter. I'm going to have it until she goes back to school. And then she's not yet to take the school. Um, all I'd ask for is a little something for my time and effort. And once I have that, oh, that's this is uh, part of the, this isn't one of the feet. This is something else. So I gotta paint that in. Um, so minus whatever's the cost and time and trouble. Uh, Whatever that is, per model or per thing that I build, like for instance, this is what I build a model, model of the Rossinate. That's not going to be some, uh, that's printer ink and paper. So um, the cost will be considerably lowered for that, so more of it will go into my pocket for that. But let's say I raise two hundred dollars. Whatever I say it costs me to build this, plus the materials. I mean, the materials plus a little bit of time, something for my time and effort. And I raise two hundred dollars. Fifty of it will go into my pocket, so I can build another model and do the same thing with. Donate the proceeds, but that won't be for a while because. I'm nowhere near good enough for that right now. So this is going to be one of my granddaughter's science class come August. I'll go with her to that. And then uh, so that, you know, that, that that's what I plan on doing with this one. But let's say uh, the uh, 
always wanted the paint uh the land rover not the, the paint panther uh and i'll keep the p51 but the x-wing and the gun to my mind now, I've got a Gundam up here that is ha is cord built. It's actually in pieces all over the place. I don't even think I have the whole thing anymore. I'll buy another one to replace it. And then I'll use parts from it to build that new one. But like that Gundam, if I say uh, $300 and it goes to a veterans charity, uh, the Gundams are expensive. <laughs> I mean, this one really was, this was like uh, $75. So that's what I want. I want to recoup that. Plus a little bit of my time in trouble. Can I understand that? And I'll do that again. But like I said, if you can give me a... Uh, I haven't put them on my, on my videos yet because I'm nowhere near that good yet. But if you give me a like and subscribe, a like or a subscribe... Arm out. Help me improve my channel. Because I could use all the help I can get. Okay. Uh, as I usually like to when I close a video, I like to show that I'm cleaning up and putting things away. And a lot of guys don't do that. They just will come in and Build the bottle, and one of the guys that does, well, there's a guy, um, there are people who just don't talk, don't tell you what they're doing or why they're doing it or how they did it, where, where they came up with that idea. That bothers the crap out of me. But that's their, that's their thing, their channel. Do what makes you, do what makes you feel good. Okay, now, uh, some of the stuff. I'll reuse like this. But then some of the stuff I won't reuse, like these rags, they're going in the garbage. But these uh, cups and containers, I'll reuse them a couple of times. And when they get really grody, I'll throw them away. They're clean on the inside. So. Now this bottle now this bottle is this part has gotten down this stage, so this is gonna have to stay like this from now on. So I'm gonna build on this now. I'm gonna mount it up on my wall, make it look nice and pretty, make a nice shelf for it. That's also one of the reasons why I put that uh, saw blade so I can make that. Okay, so I need to work on my dinner now, and my time is just about up. So I'm going to call my granddaughter, because that's what my daughter was telling me, is I need to talk to her. And uh, come back tomorrow night and do this build, starting around 8 o'clock, be part 5. And um, a lot of this is going to get that nice aluminum. I have another aluminum around here somewhere. I'm going to have to find it. And I'm going to have to remix my paints. Oh, is that it? Well, that's a gray. But I have another kind of metal around here somewhere. And uh, once I now uh, so, uh, what I'm doing is getting ready to, because that is basically going to get completely aluminized, just about everything there, and then that way all I got to do is just black it up. So I'll build, uh, um, not even going to go into that plan yet, because I haven't done it. So, everything starts from scratch tomorrow. <sighs> Yes, clear coat. Uh, clear coat. Uh, I gotta find that gray.
because that aluminum, even if I water it down, it's going to run out real, real quick. But I do like it, and it does cover nicely, and it does give them all a nice sheen, which is what I was looking for. So I'll give it another nice little sheen touch. So, uh, finish cleaning this thing up for the assembly of the limb. Uh, that's going to be fun. That's going to require a lot of aluminum over everything. But I got to see how it touches, how it applies, because that's also got to go on my Tuskegee. Because it's nice, dull aluminum. And it's the kind of thing I want to use. Um, so I'm going to cut it off here. Now, tomorrow, uh, I will be detailing the Neil and Buzz figures and assembling their packs. So, assembling them in their packs and then gluing them down. And then after that, I will start on the construction of the uh, lunar module itself. And we'll get into some fun packs about that then. But, uh, so that's it for tonight. Uh, I'm going to try to be live. And I'm going to start holding myself to that schedule. Live by 8 o'clock my time, Kansas. So, good luck. Wish you, you all have a good night. And if you want to give me a like and subscribe, great. Burn them out. They're going to be start, I'll start putting those up pretty soon. Uh, again, I'm still learning the process of the software, what it takes to do the models. So come watch me screw it up. I'll talk to you later.